Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are live. We are live. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is worthy to be praised. Bless the name of the Most High God. God is so good. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are so blessed that you are joining us tonight. Truly, it is an awesome privilege to be with you tonight. God is so, so good. She is worthy to be praised. And we are just here. We are excited that you are a part of what is going to happen tonight. We are going places with Jesus Ministries. I am Pastor Cindy Jordan, and I am joined tonight with a very special person, Pastor Desiree Stewart. And I am going to give you all the deets about her in a little bit, because she is so very special to me and I'm so happy she's joining us tonight as our special guest and so we are getting ready to go on with our service tonight we have one hour but Pastor Desiree you know how technology works we have to give people a little bit of time to come on in so as you come on in we are waiting for you um, as you come on in, make sure that you like this um, stream broadcast, share it with someone on your page, tag yeah. someone, be sure to be active and engage with us tonight. Make sure you put up those hearts, those likes, and please put a big hallelujah in the comments as well, because we want to know that you are with us throughout the entire session tonight. So go ahead, if you are with us tonight, please go ahead and put up a, a hard put up a like let me see who is in with us we have a couple people that has already joined us a few people that are here hi everybody welcome welcome to our session tonight i know you're going to be blessed tremendously for god has something in store for every single one of us tonight we are talking about faith and let me tell you how many of you know we need faith, we need an understanding of faith, and we need a practical application of faith more than ever in this season of our lives and in this season of our kingdom lives as well. And so we want to be sure that you get ready for the word that is coming through the woman of God tonight. But we are making room. There's a lot of people that are coming on already, Pastor Desiree, and they are waiting to hear what God has to say. I have my pen and my notepad, and I'm going to be ready tonight. A lot of notes so we are going to get into a time of worship i see a lot of people that are tagging folks go ahead and tag go ahead and comment yes share be sure to share the broadcast as well you can just hit that share button and post it on your timeline and everybody on your friends list who should be able to see it janine god bless you janine you are tagging a lot of people god bless you thank you for doing so we see shanique Forbes is on. God bless you. Uh, we see Minister yeah. Shatter is on. Um, Sister Angela is on. God bless you, Sister Angela. I see a couple other people watching. Roseanne is watching. God bless you. Deandra, yeah. Pastor D, God bless you for watching. Uh, and we see a lot of other people that are coming on. If you are on and you're watching us, put a hallelujah in the comments so we can shout you out so we could know who is with us tonight. Um, we want to make sure that we acknowledge as many people that we can because we understand that time is precious. Mm -hmm. And so if you're spending time with us tonight, we appreciate you because we know God has a word in store for you tonight. Again, I am Pastor Cindy Jordan, and we have the esteemed privilege to welcome with us us tonight, Pastor Desiree Stewart. Oh my God. And I am so privileged. Pastor Desiree, um, I sat under Pastor Desiree for many, many years uh, as her mentee. I was her armor bearer at one time. I served mm -hmm. under her and her dear husband, Reverend David Stewart, mm -hmm. um, under their ministry for many years. And while sitting under their ministry and their tutelage, I learned a lot about leadership and how I didn't even know I was getting into leadership in this capacity, Pastor Desiree, while I sat on. Yeah. 
to you guys. And um, I, I gleaned so much about leadership. I gleaned about faith. And what I loved about serving under you, I had the privilege of being a participant observer, meaning mm -hmm. that I was able to participate and serve the woman of God in an intimate way, but I was also able to reap from what she was teaching and preaching in a very, very personal, applicable way. And so Pastor Desiree is one of those people in my life that I could look back and put a thumbprint and said, it was Pastor Desiree in this moment that allowed me to mature in this particular area of my life. Motherhood, mm -hmm. Pastor Desiree, I learned a lot about motherhood. When I sat under you, I was nowhere being a mother. And so I learned a lot of motherhood, balancing motherhood and marriage and ministry. I saw that firsthand with you. And I bless you, woman of God, for God bringing you into my life and allowing us to continue the relationship where we have today. So Pastor Desiree is a powerhouse, guys. So, but she's also a teacher. And she brings the word in a way that you need to make notes. You need to make sure that you have a pen and a piece of paper to not miss any revelation that God is going to give through her to you tonight. Mm -hmm. And so before we do anything, we are just going to worship. How about that? Mm -hmm. Pastor mm -hmm. Desiree is also a worship leader, by the way. She's a woman with many hats in the kingdom. And so we want to spend this time worshiping the King of Kings, welcoming the presence of God in our atmosphere and during this live stream because we do nothing unless we acknowledge the father first how could we go and say we are coming in the name of the father if we don't first acknowledge the father and so we want to take this moment right now as you're coming in to just lift up the name of the most high god and if you are watching us tonight could you go ahead and just worship god put a word of adoration to god what does god mean to you in this moment could you put it in the comments could you put something in there that he's my father he's the lover of my soul he is my king he is my savior he is my deliverer put one word in what god means to you in this very moment and so father god we come to you acknowledging mm -hmm. As Lord, as Savior over everything concerning us. Oh God, we bow in humility right now and we make room and space for you. We put aside everything that we may have planned or have an agenda to make room for you. Yes, God. God, we pray right now that your will be done, that your divine will be done. Father God, we thank you for that this moment was not happenstance, but this moment was planned. It was ordained and set by you. And so we are just coming in obedience to do what you want us to do tonight. I pray for every person that is going to join on now or even in the rebroadcast, that they will receive a rhema word in this time, a word to equip and Encourage the saints and the church, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for what you are going to do. Come on, people of God, if you are looking at us now, come on, worship God with us. We are making room for worship. We don't want to do anything unless we spend sufficient time in worship. Yes, God, touch the people, God. Thank you. Thank you for those that are worshiping with us. We see your comments. God bless you. Lift up the name of God. Take this moment and adore him. Adore the King of Kings. Adore the Lord of Lords. Adore the ruler of the heavens and the earth, Lord God. Everything stands still in your presence, Father God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord and we give you all the adoration the glory belongs to you right now in the name of jesus thank you father god thank you father god yes i see some people saying that god is your healer yes he's a healer tonight he's so faithful god is faithful my god but god is my all and all yes he is our all and all tonight he is the alpha and the omega in the name of jesus hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up a hallelujah right now. Lift up the name of Jesus. Whatever it 
is that is on your heart tonight, you can lay it at the feet of the Father because he cares for us tonight. He cares for you. He cares for me in an intimate and personal way. And so we want to acknowledge the God that we serve tonight in the name of Jesus. Bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Glory be to the name of the Most High God. Yes, God, yes, God, we lift you up, Father God. Everything for your glory, everything for your honor. In Jesus' name, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, people of God. You can press in a little bit more. Press in a little bit more. Press in a little bit more. Come on, press your heart into the presence of God. Press your heart into his presence right now, God. Yes, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. We bless the name of the most high God who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah, God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Father God. We reverence your name. Hallelujah. That everything that has breath, praise the Lord. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And if you have breath tonight, put it in the comments. Say, Praise the Lord. If you have breath in your lungs tonight and you are inhaling and exhaling, put it in the comments, put it in all caps. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone joining us tonight. If you're just logging on, we are just worshiping. Because we love to worship God, because we understand it's in our worship that we have the breakthrough. It's in our worship that we tear down the plans of the enemy. It's in our worship tonight that we have the victory in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to your name. Again, welcome us. Well, we welcome you rather to go in places with Jesus Ministries, Bible Empowerment live stream tonight with our very special guest, Pastor Desiree Stewart, who is going to release a word tonight, and we are getting ready to let the woman of God come on the platform. But before we do that, we have a few announcements that I want to just briefly touch on before we get into the word. Number one, every Sunday right here, right here at 11 a.m., we have divine worship from 11 to 12 with our senior pastor, Pastor Roger J. Jordan and our associate pastor, Pastor DeAndre Hilaire, that they lead us into worship. Every Friday night, we have youth via Zoom. Youth via Zoom, if you need information on how you can have a young person join the Zoom youth meeting, send us an e e email at info at goingplaceswithjesusministries.com. And every Wednesday, we're right back here for Bible empowerment. Amen. Just a quick note, Jesus to the Culture for June has been postponed. Jesus for the Culture for June has been postponed. Please look out for more details for the next Jesus to the Culture that is coming up very soon. Without any more rambling, Pastor Desiree, woman of God, I bless you, and I'm so happy we are sharing this platform tonight. I am going to step aside and give you the platform, and I pray that God will use you as you speak, thus says the Lord tonight. Please make welcome our very esteemed guest, Pastor Desiree Stewart. Come on, somebody, put it in the comments, put those hands up, and welcome Pastor Desiree as she comes tonight. God bless you, woman of God. Pastor Cindy, I am so humbled tonight for this opportunity just to share, and you know, you, you just made me feel just almost teary eyed just by talking. I mean, God, had, God took us on this journey and I am so grateful and so thankful that you were a part of the journey. You know, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, oh my goodness, I am so excited just to be sharing with my spiritual daughter, my spiritual daughter to be sharing the platform and just to see where God has brought you from and where he is taking you and even further. And we're not even talking about levels. We stop talking about levels. We're dealing with dimension in this hour. 
My Glory God. to God. And just for that dimension, I mean, that plateau, that place where he's taking both you and Pastor Jordan. And, you know, I just want to publicly say thank you so much for serving me the years mm. that you served me because you did it and you did it so well. Mm, you did God. it so well, Pastor Cindy. And, you know, I just want to tell Going Places with People Ministry that you have a jewelry. I missed her so much when she left. <laughs> higher place ministry but I knew that I had to let her go and just to see what God is doing and 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 just the just the example that she has set for the young people that we had for the young people where she were and just seeing her morphed into motherhood and pastoring mm. has been such a great delight in my to my heart and I am so thankful tonight for this opportunity just to be able to share tonight to share what God placed in my heart tonight and I just know I'm not going to use the word and say I hope that it grab at the heart of somebody I know that somebody's going to walk away tonight you know just understanding just how important faith is to the believer I mean it is like the first thing on ground level glory to God it is like the floor that is put in before the rest of the building goes up because if I don't have faith as my foundation everything else will not operate the way it is supposed to operate because faith has got to be my foundation so let's just kick off just a little bit of teaching tonight in Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 6, the Bible puts it this way. The Bible said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of him who diligently seek him. So that is the first ground level when we look at that. When we look at that glory to God, the Bible said that he who comes to him. So that let us know that we can't come without faith. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when we come, Pastor Cindy, we don't even realize that we're coming in with a ground level on faith because we don't understand the concept of faith when we're just coming into him. All we know is that we are making a decision in our heart to come to Christ, not even understanding that we're coming with faith. And so the Bible said, he who comes to him, it is impossible to please him for anybody that comes to God must believe that he is. So how can I look at it? Faith is the substance of what we expect to possess the title deed or the receipt of what already belongs to us. Mm. It is knowing that what we have prayed for in the timeless realm of the spirit is going to be manifested in due season. Wow. So what is it? Faith is taking God at his word. It is the faith is to the Christian what oxygen is to the body. Come on now. Yes. So in other words, I can't breathe without oxygen and I cannot be a child of God without wow. faith. That's good. One writer put it this way. It said that faith is the first gift that we receive for mm. justification. And faith is the gift that brings the other gifts of the spirit into our lives. Mm. And so when a person is born again, God gives him gift as a new member of the body of God or the, the family or the body of Christ. And so we receive the gifts according to the measure that God has given us. And we exercise the gift according to the same measure of faith. And so I believe in this season that we're in a, we're in a place and a time in the season where last year and we're still going through what we classify as a pandemic. And I believe that the body of Christ is in a season where we must operate in faith, the kingdom of God. You know, we see so much and we saw the world going through a recession, went through not only a recession, the world, I mean, was experiencing the pandemic, but we're so glad tonight as children of God that the kingdom never experienced a pandemic <laughs> my god my and god so therefore as children of faith and as children of god we have we had this just our responsibility through all of this was to stand regardless of 
My God. Because in this season, we have to understand that we, we have, there are times that we operate in what I call the head fate or mm. the promise kind of fate where we have to see something before we believe it. Mm. But when you have to remember when Jesus, when, when Jesus went among the disciples and, and, and they saw, and it was Thomas, and Thomas said, you know what? I can't believe until I see. And when Jesus went up to Thomas and he said, go ahead and put your hand there. But then he made a statement and he said, but blessed are those who have believed, even though they have not seen it. And I believe that sometimes in the body of Christ, we're looking for physical evidence. Wow. We want something that our hands can touch before we believe. Sometimes something that we can feel before we believe. And sometimes this is the kind of faith that the unsaved operates in and not the body of Christ. Mm, wow. We cannot afford to operate in what I call the head kind of faith. Mm -hmm. So we must know that faith begins where the will of God is known. Mm. Let me say it again. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And our faith is never greater than the revelation knowledge of the word of God because it is my faith that is going to allow me to tap into the word to bring me the revelation that is coming forth out of the word. Right, right. It is my faith that is going to allow that to be that to happen yes and so when you when we talk about faith and and you look at faith you have to understand that the body of christ cannot and will not walk in wholeness without operating in faith mm. when we look at faith we have to understand that faith acts let me stop wow. there for a moment yes faith acts so pastor cindy the act comes from my faith yes not the faith yes. from my acts come on now that's because good. i have to act in order for my faith glory to god to be stirred up hmm. i have to act for my faith i have to put my action first and hmm. then to see the manifestation of that which i am believing god for hmm. So my action has got to come into play in order for my faith to begin to show up. I have to act first. Hebrew 11 said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So yes. in other words, faith is helpless without hope. <sighs> wow. Wow. Faith wow. is helpless without hope. It makes no sense for me to be able to move in faith if I don't have hope. Okay. Because the Bible said, if it was only in this life that we had hope, we would be as men most miserable. <laughs> so if I don't have hope, my situation is dead. Mm. So I cannot operate in faith, Pastor Cindy, without hoping. Okay. I cannot walk in faith, glory be to God. Why? Because you see, faith can only give substance to the hope that is within us. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Faith can only give substance. The Bible said faith is the substance of the things that is hoped for, right? Before. So right. faith can, give, can only give substance to the hope that is within us. So what I'm hoping for is my expectation. Hmm. And so the action of my faith, come on now, is going to move me towards hope so hmm. that I can have an expectation. So people of God, I cannot walk into faith if I don't have an expectation. I have to be able, when I put my faith in action, I also have to have a mindset of expectation. I cannot just sit back and just pray for something and don't have an expectation or don't have a hope. I have to couple that together. I cannot walk in faith if I don't have an expectation. Mm. I need to have an expectation. You know, it's like saying, um, we go to church and sometimes when we go to church and you ask somebody, what are you coming into church for? And you say, I'm coming for a word. Mm -hmm. 
But I believe, Pastor Cindy, that we got to get to the place where we go to church for more than just a word. Because I can get a word by going into the Bible. But I need yeah. to be able to go and get a word with a higher expectation. I am coming in with an expectation of seeing the presence of God and seeing the spirit of God move. I am coming with an expectation that the Bible talks about in the book of Chronicle. When the Bible said that as the minstrels begin to play and as the music begin to go and, and as that vapor and that sound of worship, glory to God, goes into the nostril of God, the Bible said that. That, that the place was so filled with the atmosphere was so filled that even the priests could not stand to worship, to, could not stand to minister. I need to go in with an expectation. expectation. Yes, my God. I need to go in with an expectation. An expectation. With an expectation. Because you see, when I possess, when I'm talking about the fate of God, it's going to reach ahead. I love this. <laughs> I get excited. When I, when I possess the faith of God, you know what it does? It reaches ahead. In other words, it goes into what seems to be impossible or unrealistic. And Pastor Cindy, it brings it into my realm of now. Wow. Wow. That's wow. what happened when we possess the faith of God. We're not talking about any wishy-washy faith. We're not just talking about any faith. We're talking about the faith of God. Hmm. It has a way of going into what seems impossible or unrealistic, and it just kind of brings it into the realm of now. Have you ever been believing God for something? And when he shows up and when he does it, it just blows your mind. Yes, yes. Expecting God to bring it into that place of now. Amen, amen. There are three different areas in the Bible, in the book of Habakkuk and Roman and, and Ephesian, and, and also in um, if the Bible said, declares that the just shall live amen. by faith. Yes. Our entire Christian walk is a faith walk. It's a faith walk. How do I know that it's a faith walk? Because Ecclesiastic 11 and four, the Bible said, he who observed the wind and wait for the conditions to be favorable will not so. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. This is the word. That's, that's... He who observed the wind and wait for the condition to be favorable will not so. Lord have mercy. And he who regards the cloud will not reap. In other words, your faith has to be so driven. You have to be so driven by your faith that you don't allow your situation or your circumstances to dictate how you're going to move. Come on. That's good. I cannot allow for where I am. I cannot allow my situation. I cannot allow what I'm seeing. I cannot allow what I'm feeling. I cannot allow what people say to determine and to set my atmosphere and determine how I move. Why? Because if I observe the wind and the wind is not going according to how I think it should be going, glory to God, then I am going to say today may not be the day for me to sow. Jesus. So it's not determined by that. It is determined by my faith. So in other words, if I believe, then I must act on it. Yes. Faith yes. is important to the believer. Faith is important. Faith is crucial to the body of Christ. Yes. To the body of Christ. When I look at faith, we have to understand that faith must be alive. Amen. James chapter 2 verse 17 says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, this is continuing in James chapter 2 from verse 17. He said, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my work. 
<laughs> I know that there is somebody out in Facebook land that have some had some situations in your life that you just know that if your faith was not coupled in with your prayer and your worship, glory be to the Lamb of God, you would have never seen the manifestation of what you're seeing right now. Come on. Amen. Why? Because you coupled your faith with your work. Right. And so the writer said, show me your work without your, show me your faith without your work. And I will show you my faith by my works. Come on. Hallelujah. By my works. Glory Hallelujah. To the Lord. Verse Hallelujah. 21 said, do you see that faith was working together with his works? And it was talking about Abraham. He said, was not Abraham or father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? When God spoke the word to Abraham, he said, Abraham, I want you to take Isaac, your son. Take him to go and sacrifice him. Isaac did not bat an eye. Come on, for those of you in Facebook line who are a parent, I'm telling you, I have two children and I don't don't know how I would act. <laughs> I don't know what my reaction would be, Pastor Cindy. I would probably say that is just a plan of the enemy. Amen. I would say that's the devil speaking. <laughs> and the Bible said that Abraham got up, and when they asked Abraham, Where are you going? Abraham said, I'm going to worship. Ha, come on. And right there and then, Abraham began to couple his work along with his faith. Yes. Because Abraham could have sat back and said, okay, God, I know you tell me to do this, but let me wait and see what's going to happen. The Bible said early the next morning, the man of God got up. And the man of God took his son. And I can just imagine Abraham, if you can go with me in your mind's eye. Abraham walking up Mount Mar Moriah and Abraham said, God, I don't know what you're planning, but I know you have a plan. Come on. I don't know what it's going to look like when I get up there, but God, I know you have a plan. Come on, have you ever been there? Ooh. God, I don't know how I'm going to get over, but I know you have a plan. God, I don't even know what to say right now, but I know you have a plan. have a plan, yes. And so we saw his faith and his work came together. Mm. And the scripture was fulfilled, which say Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Yes. And so the Bible said God called him his friend. Mm. God called him his friend. So faith must be alive in me. Yeah. That's the work. Yeah. Faith is a defense against the enemy. Come on now. Come on. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 and 9, the Bible said, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So he's doing his job. Mm. But mm. verse 9 said this. Pastor Cindy, it said, resist them. Yes. Be steadfast in the faith. <laughs> Knowing that the same sufferings are experiencing by your brotherhood in the world. But I love the way how the Amplified Bible put it. The Amplified Bible said, be sober, yes. well-balanced and disciplined. Mm. Be alert and cautious at all time. Glory to God. The enemies." The enemy of yours, the devil, prowl around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. He said, but resist them. Yes. Be firm in your faith. Come on, somebody. Come on now. He said, oh. be firm in your faith against his attack. That means you got to be rooted, established, and immovable. Come on, my God. Jesus, help us, Lord. Hmm. Be firm in your faith. Be rooted, be established, be immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your other brothers and sisters throughout the world. Glory to be to the Lamb of God. Faith is a defense against yes. the enemy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 said, above all, he said, taking the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot walk this walk without faith. Hey. 
God. Faith is my shield. Faith oh. is my defense weapon against the enemy. The writer Paul said, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Glory to God. One translation, the Passion Translation said, in every battle, take faith as your wrap around shield. Wow. Mm. Take faith as your wrap shield. around shield because it is able, I love this, it is able to distinguish the blazing arrow coming at you oh. from the one. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I could just do a dance right there. <laughs> I want to tell somebody out there in Facebook land, if you have been leaving your shield at home, if you have left your shield somewhere, you need to go and pick it back up because the Bible said it is your wrap around shield because it is able to extinguish the blazing arrow that is coming to you from the evil one hallelujah hallelujah faith hallelujah is a defense against the enemy amen mm. and we also have pastor cindy what i call the faith that obeys oh, my god because speak on it time it is your faith that is that 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 comes into operation that prompts you to obey that even when your flesh doesn't want to do it. Ooh. Your faith said, "Come on, I know better than that." Ooh. Your faith tell you that, "Oh my God, my situation may look one way. Glory be to the Lamb of God, but my faith is telling me that it's not always gonna be like this." Why? Because weeping. David said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I want to encourage somebody. You better go back and take up your weapon. Hallelujah. Go back and take up your weapon. Glory to God. Go back and take up your shield tonight. Hallelujah. We need to operate in the faith that obeys. The Bible said in the book of Genesis that God told Noah to build an ark. Yes. He's never seen an ark. Ha, come He's on. Even, Noah, didn't, Noah didn't even see rain. Ah. And the Bible said, so God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Then God said to Noah, the end of all flesh, my God has come before me. He said, for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold, I will destroy them. Isn't that what we are experiencing right now? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he gave Noah a word. He said, Noah, I want you to make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make room in the ark and cover it inside and out. And the Bible said, and Noah did according mm. to all that God commanded him. So he did. My God. What is the ultimate faith in obedience? Yes. Because here you are. Have you ever, have any of you ever been given an assignment by God and you heard it, but you just didn't know how you're going to move forward in it? And sometimes, Pastor Cindy, all God is waiting for is a yes. Hallelujah. All God is waiting for is yes, I spoke it to you. Because you know what? If God gave you an assignment and it's too easy, you need to go back and find out, was it really from God? <laughs> Glory be to the Lamb of God, because it's in the midst of our adversity that sometimes we experience victory. Yes. Uh, we're in a season where we are afraid of adversity. We don't want to go through anything. Glory to God. We don't want to be put back on the wheel, Pastor Cindy. We don't don't want to, we don't want to humble ourselves for God to make us into another vessel. The Bible said that when he went down to the potter's house with Jeremiah, Jeremiah did not see anything wrong with the vessel, but God saw something wrong with the vessel. And I believe that God is calling somebody come back tonight to tell you, get back on the wheel because I'm not finished with you yet. He's calling somebody to say, okay, you were a vessel in this season. 
This was the vessel that you got that I made you for in this season, but I'm getting ready to shift you into another season and I need you back on the wheel. Mm. because I'm getting ready to mold you into another vessel. Mm. Glory to God. The Bible talks about, we're talking about faith that obeys. Faith that obeys. We saw Abraham again having to offer up Isaac. We saw Abraham. The Bible said that when God called Abraham, God said to him, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Oh my he God. Said to Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I just really feel that in my spirit tonight that God is calling somebody to get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone and step out on faith tonight. Glory to God. Get out of your comfort zone and just begin to believe God for what He is calling you for for what he is calling you into tonight. Tonight, I come against the spirit of fear tonight. I come against the spirit of timidity. I come against everything tonight that is coming against God's people that will cause you not to step out. God told Abraham, he said, leave your country, leave your friend, leave your people, and I'm going to take you somewhere so I can make a name out of you my god my god my god gonna mm. make a great thing out of you but you're too afraid to step out and wow. the question is what are you waiting for what are you waiting for and he said not only that he said i'm going to show you that land i'll make a great nation he said i'm going to bless you and I'm going to make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you. I just want to prophesy to somebody and tell them tonight that God has somebody waiting to bless you. <laughs> You're going to come forth with that testimony. Amen. That God has somebody, I will bless those that bless you. And when that person bless you and so into your bosom, God will bless them back. And he said, and I will curse those that curse you and you and, and in you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Wow. Why? Because Abraham stepped out of his comfort zone. He yeah. stepped out of his place. He stepped out of the place of familiarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he moved into unfamiliar territory. Oh my God. Pastor Cindy, we're afraid of unfamiliar territory. Who? Because sometimes we don't know what to expect in unfamiliar territory. Sure. But just go back and look at Abraham. When God took him out, he brought him in. Yeah. If God is taking you out, God is going to bring you bring in. You. My God. And it does not matter. There is a great quote by Tora Corriton Boom, and she talked about the fact that when you are riding on a train and you're going through a tunnel, you don't jump off. You will sit on the train and allow the conductor to take you out until you get into the light once again. I'm here to tell somebody just be still and know that he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be still and know that he is God. Hallelujah. As children of God, sometimes we just have to operate in a faith that believes. Yes. <laughs> Genesis chapter 50, Pastor Cinder, the Bible said, and Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for I, for, for am I, am, am I in Am I in the place of God? This is when was when Joseph's brother, they threw him mm. in the pit. And the Bible said, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people. Joseph wow. understood that God brought him into a place where he would have had to turn around to bless those that were never a blessing to him. Oh my God. God. 
God will bring you out just so he can bring you in. Yes. He'll take you out, I'm sorry, to, to bring you in. What about the faith that conquers? Yeah. The Bible talks about David in the book of 1 Samuel. And in 1 Samuel chapter, 40, um, chapter 17 and, and 46, the Bible said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. This was David telling Goliath what he was going to do. He said, and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistine to the bird and of the ear and the wild beast of the earth and all the earth that shall know that there is a God in Israel. Why? Because we serve a God that help us to operate in a faith that conquers. Amen. Amen. A faith that conquers. Yeah. The Bible talks about Elijah in the book of first King. And the Bible said that Elijah, when Elijah went up on top of the mountain, and the Bible said, and it came to pass at the time of the offering, the evening offering, that Elijah the prophet came there and he said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are the God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all, I have done all these at your word. And he said, hear me, hear me. <laughs> And the Bible said, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and lifted up the water that was in the trench. And all the people that saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God, because we serve a God, my God, that teaches us to operate in a faith that will conquer. Conquer. Hallelujah. Pastor Cindy, what about the faith that provides? Mm. The widow in Zarephath. Yeah. <laughs> mm. The Bible said that when the man of God went in, can you imagine somebody walking into your house and say, listen, I know all you have is just a little bit of stuff to feed you and your child and then what's going to happen? But you know what? I want you to turn around and give it to me. And the Bible said, he said to her, don't be afraid. Just mm. do what I told you, tell you to do. Just mm. make me a little cake. For thus set the Lord God of, I mean, how can you go against the set the Lord God of Israel? <laughs> the faith that provides, the faith that will cause you to step out. The Bible said, Elisha said to her, listen, your, the, the, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the, the jar of oil run out until the day that the Lord send rain on the earth. And the Bible says she went away and she did it. And she used it, and she yes. used it, and she used it, and Hallelujah. she used it. Why? Because she moved in obedience. She stepped out on faith to what the man of God said, and the faith that she moved out on turned around and provided for her. Wow. My God. And I'm winding down, but, but, but can I go without talks about the faith that delivers? Yes, yes. Speak on it. Amen. The Bible said that God told Moses to deliver the children of Israel. And the Bible said they came upon the Red Sea. And I always talk about the fact that sometimes when, when God gives us an assignment, our assignment does not get canceled because we come upon a Red Sea. Come on. Our assignment doesn't get canceled because of where husbands are getting on our nerves. Our assignment don't get canceled because the children are getting on our nerves. Our assignment does not get canceled because the, the boss on the job or whomever it is, when God gives us an assignment, he expects us to carry it out. And so they came upon the Red Sea. And the Bible said that God looked, the, the, the Bible said that when Moses looked around and he said, okay, God, I have a Red Sea in front of me. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> the Bible said God reminded him and God said, Moses, wait a minute now. What do you have in your hand? And so the question I'm asking you tonight, Ooh. what do you have in your spirit? Hallelujah. The Bible said in Exodus 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Amen. I'm here to tell somebody tonight that you don't even have to fight the battle yourself because God got you. Amen. Hallelujah. And as I take my last minute, I'm getting all excited. What about Daniel in the lion's den? 
Come on. <laughs> the God that delivers. Oh, glory to God. Somebody needs to hear this tonight that even in the midst of the lion's den, he will deliver you. Amen. He will shut the mouth of your enemy. Glory to God. He will shut the mouth of the lion even while you are standing in the den. Why? Because we serve a God that will deliver even in the lion's den. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. This is in the agar. The, 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 the faith that trusts, the faith that moves, the faith that heals, the faith that perseveres. Woo! Go ahead. The Go faith ahead. that saved. Jeez. The faith that is undoubtable to move mountains. Mark chapter 11, as I wind down, the Bible says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whosoever say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that these things he say will be done. He will have whatsoever he said. And there is a faith glory to God that saved. The Bible said, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. Through faith through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of god yeah not of works lest any man should boast glory to god hallelujah so, children of god facebook world what do i want to say to you tonight that as children of god and as we move in faith i would just ask you tonight to be sincere in your faith Abound in your faith, continue in your faith, be strong in your faith, stand fast in your faith, be grounded and settled in your faith, hold with a good conscience in your faith, pray for the increase of your faith and have full assurance of your faith. Why? Because by faith we live, we walk, we stand, we obtain a good report, we overcome the world, we resist the devil, we Ooh. overcome the devil. And by faith is what? We walk. Hallelujah. We walk by faith. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless God for this word tonight. We bless God for the woman of God that he used tonight, Pastor Desiree. If you received from this word tonight, I need somebody to put up in the comments, I received. Come on, put it in the comments, I received. Don't just say I received, but as Pastor Desiree challenged us tonight, put some action behind your faith because we serve a God that moves in our faith. He moves before us in our faith. As Pastor Desiree reminded us tonight, faith is our, we conquer through faith. We persevere through faith. My God, faith provides for us. If we understand, as Pastor Desiree taught us tonight, that in faith, there are so many multifaceted components to the believer and our longevity in faith. My God. So tonight, we want to encourage you. If you receive tonight, go ahead and put it in the comments. Bless God for the woman of God. I want you to just say, God bless you, Pastor Desiree. Thank you for being obedient to the assignment tonight and i want her to ask i want to ask you one more thing before we get ready to wrap up could you just pray over somebody right now if you are wavering in your faith tonight no matter what measure what type of, uh, of situation you're dealing with if that is you just put up your hand an emoji hand right now it as if you were in a virtual altar right now just put up your hand if you need prayer the woman of god will pray with you give you that movable oh my god non-changing sustainable faith pastor desiree mm -hmm. i see a couple of people that are putting mm -hmm. their hands up could you go ahead and pray over them yes 
Father, we just thank you tonight. We bless you. We magnify. We glorify your name. Father, we just honor you tonight because you're such a great and mighty God. Father, we thank you tonight because you are the God that said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, you are the God that meets our needs. You are the God that meets us at the point where we are. And so tonight, oh God, we just want to take a moment to thank you for your Holy Spirit that is flowing in us, through us, and among us right now. And Father, we thank you tonight for the hearers of your word tonight. Father, I declare tonight that the word, the seed that have been planted, Father, we just declare tonight, oh God, that there is an increase, there is a growth that is taking place from this seed tonight. Yeah. Father, I declare tonight, you said in your word that you give each of us a measure of faith. So Father, the faith that you have given us tonight, Father God, we're stepping out tonight on that faith with a hope, oh God, and an expectation tonight. So God, I just bring your children, your sons, your daughter before you tonight. Father, those that are struggling in their faith, those mm. tonight who are standing, oh God, in between a decision, those, oh God, who don't know which way to go. Father God, I pray that their faith would be strengthened in you tonight, oh God. Father, I declare tonight, oh God, that Father, the measure that you have given them tonight, that Father, they would step out and not only walk in it, God, but God, I declare, oh God, that they would couple the works with their faith so they can see a manifestation as what you did for Abraham, oh God. Father God, for what you did for Elijah, God, because God, the God that Abraham serve the God that Elijah serve is the same God that we are serving tonight. So God, I come against everything that come against your people's mind tonight. Oh God, that would want to tell them tonight, oh God, that they have no faith. Yeah. God, tonight I declare, oh God, that the faith that you have already given them, God, that God, you would stir that faith up tonight. Stir the faith for the situation, God. Father, that person, oh God, that need to make a decision tonight, I declare that even now, God, there is a faith building that is taking place right now, and God, they would hear your voice whispering in their ear gate tonight, God, and Father God, they would know the direction to take, because oh, yeah. God, they are coupling their faith with work. You said in your work, the word that faith without works is dead, and so God, God, I declare tonight, God, that your people will act, God, that they will understand that faith sitting by itself without action will produce nothing. And so, God, tonight, God, I declare that your people right now are stepping out in the realm of the spirit, God. Father, I can see them tonight. I pray tonight that they would see themselves stepping out of that box, stepping out of their comfort zone, stepping out of that place of familiarity and getting ready to move into territory they have never been in before. Father, I declare, God, that they shall conquer territories tonight, God, that they never thought they had the faith to conquer. Father, you said, oh God, my God, to Joshua as they got ready to cross Jordan, you said wherever the sole of your feet touch, that you can, oh my God, you can claim it. God, I declare tonight, God, that as the sole of your, the feet of your people begin to touch places that God, their faith, oh God, will allow them to move and begin, oh God, to speak things that are not as though they were. Jesus. Father, I thank you that Pastor Cindy will get testimony, God. Jesus. Father, I thank you, God, because you said that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. So I declare that the testimonies will come forth, God, as your people move not only into another level, but another dimension of their faith tonight. Yes. Understanding that as children of God, their faith is crucial mm. to their faith. Father, we call it done tonight 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless Hallelujah. you. God bless you. And everybody say amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. We pray that you will not just be hearers of this word, but you will activate this word in your daily lives. We want to say thank you to Pastor Desiree again for bestowing us our uh, time and spending this moment with us and speaking, thus says the Lord. And we pray that virtue will be restored back unto her and that God will favor her hands and her feet and her ministry and her husband and her children in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for their lives and the witness that they are showing unto others that you are a great and mighty God and we bless God for them right now. We thank you for joining us for another episode of Bible Empowerment here with us at Going Places with Jesus Ministries. Again, I am Pastor Cindy Jordan. We have the awesome privilege to spend time with Pastor Desiree Stewart. And we are asking you that as we are getting ready to wrap up, please consider sowing a seed. Please consider giving into this ministry. If God places on your heart to sow a seed, this is fertile ground. You can find all the information on how you can sow a seed into Going Places with Jesus Ministries on our website, uh, Going Places with Jesus, Jesus Ministries.com. And again, we give God praise for you. If you have a testimony from tonight, be sure to send us an email or put it in our direct message right here on Facebook. We want to hear from you and we want to celebrate what God is doing on you in and through you in Jesus' name. God bless everyone. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. See you Sunday at 11 a.m. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you all.